could have considered Donald Trump. You did not. Why not? Uh, well, I mean, you know, if you look at just the the facts and the the body of work of, of both candidates, and you know, uh, both of them in their own words, uh, nowhere in history has Donald Trump ever stood for the American worker. Um, he stands against pretty much everything that we stand for. After holding out for months, the United Auto Workers uh, has officially endorsed President Joe Biden for re-election. And you just heard from UAW President Sean Fain, who came with lots of receipts to help explain why it makes sense for the union to choose Biden over Trump. Let's take a look. President Biden was standing, stood there with us on the picket line, you know, unlike President Trump back in 19 when GM was on strike for 40 days and he was completely non-existent um, and silent on the issue. Um, you know, I can go down through the list of things, uh, the difference in the candidates, but uh, it's very clear to us uh, who stands with working class people in this country and who uh, stands against them. In 2008, 2009, the economic recession, Donald Trump blamed the workers for what was wrong with these companies. You know, in 2015, he talked about doing a rotation of good paying jobs in the Midwest, somewhere where they pay less and have people begging for their jobs back at lower wages. You know, in 19, uh, well, also in 15, uh, when Volkswagen workers voted to organize, um, he put an LRB in place that uh, killed the organizing drive, that killed the organizing uh, the contract for those workers. Um, you know, in, in 19, when he was president, he didn't support the strike. He told workers at Lordstown Assembly Plant, which was closing, don't sell your houses. And then he did nothing to support them, you know, versus versus President Biden, who in 2023, when a plant was going to close in Belvedere, Illinois for Stellantis, he stood with those workers. He helped us save a community and helped bring not one plant, but two plants back to life. And he stood with our members on the picket line in our fight for economic justice. Now that was quite a long list of reasons why he chose to endorse Biden over Donald Trump, but he did hold out, the UAW did hold out. And look, for the purposes of a friendlier pro labor administration, I believe it makes sense for the UAW to endorse Biden over Trump. There's also the option of not endorsing anyone, but I think that there were some conversations that were had, you know, behind closed doors. Biden was willing to work with the UAW in regard to EV vehicles and how it would impact the jobs that they do. So it is fair to say that Biden is far more friendly to labor compared to Trump. I know that that's shocking to some MAGA supporters who have completely bought into Trump's phony populist rhetoric about workers. But the fact of the matter is he hasn't really delivered for average workers in this country or any workers in this country. He has succeeded in securing tax cuts for the rich though. Yeah, I don't think this is even close. Right. I don't even know why this would be a conversation. Look, I think that the Sean O'Brien, uh, who's the leader of the team, and Sean Fain, uh, are doing a good job in uh, holding their power and their leverage and then using it at the right time. Sean uh, O'Brien uh, interviewed uh, or met with almost all of the candidates on the Democratic and Republican side. I think that's a smart thing to do. Uh, Fain didn't bother meeting with Trump, but why? Because of his track record. His track record is not unclear. So we get frustrated with Biden, you know, and the Democrats. So they'll always say that they're going to pass some sort of major pro-union legislation like the PRO Act. They never do anything about it. They barely even propose it. Obama did nothing. Biden did nothing. So there's plenty of things to get frustrated with Biden about. But but there's also upsides for Biden with labor. The National Labor Relations Board is terrific. He did go on the picket line a couple of times. He did help the striking rail workers behind the scenes mm -hmm. after the strike, etc. So there's at least some significant positives on the Biden side. On the Trump side, it's nothing but a giant list of negatives. Also, look, the, okay. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Jenk, but also you have to think about what the priority is for the leader of the United Auto Workers, and it's labor. That is the top issue. That is what matters. That is the top priority. So I see some people online on the left attacking Sean Fain. You know, he called for a ceasefire. The UAW called for a ceasefire in Gaza back in December. So they are on the right side in regard to the war on Gaza. However, the Biden administration's handling of the war was not the top priority in making this endorsement. The top priority is which administration is going to be best for labor because that's our top priority. Again, not close. Guys, yeah. you, anybody that watches this show or any other show that I've been on knows 
uh, I couldn't be more in favor of Palestinian rights and ending this war and ending the occupation. But we can do several things at the same time. This brother uh, went out of his way to try to help uh, the Palestinians, but that's not his main job. It's not even close to his main job. His main job is to look out for uh, union members in UAW. And so in doing that, that one is not close. So back to Trump, he has never done anything for workers. So he, every time there's a strike, he uh, sides with the companies, the giant corporations, and not the people. He, uh, he doesn't even think there should be a minimum wage. He's on the record as saying that. The lower your wages are, the happier he is. Guess why? He's one of the elites. So here's what MAGA never understood. It's Trump always wanted to be in the club, but they always thought he was a loser and they, and they before he got into politics. And so that always got under his skin and that's part of why he hated the elites. Not because he didn't want to be part of them, but because he wanted to be part of them so badly. And remember, MAGA guys, you know, still pretend that Trump's a billionaire. I mean, nobody thinks that in reality, but 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 the MAGA guys do, and Trump says he's a billionaire. So and certainly he owns a lot of businesses. He's driven a lot of them into the ground and bankrupted them, but he still has the Trump Organization, etc. And there he wants wages as low as possible. Remember. For a long time in construction and real estate, Donald Trump used undocumented workers at all of his sites. He's like, why would I pay an American when I could just pay lower? You know how Trump is, he doesn't wanna pay high, he wants to pay as low as humanly possible for American workers and sometimes not American workers. His golf courses were filled with undocumented immigrants. Right. So this guy is terrible on labor, awful. So I just don't see this as an interesting, question or conversation, of course, UAW should endorse Joe Biden between those two candidates. And right now, realistically, it looks like it's between those two candidates. I wanna to go to, um, well, one more video because uh, during a speech before the unionized uh, UAW workers, uh, Sean Fain had some harsh words for Donald Trump and I thought it was fun. It was certainly a little more lively than what you saw on Fox News. So let's take a look at that. Donald Trump is a scab. <laughs> Donald Trump is a billionaire and that's who he represents. <laughs> if Donald Trump ever worked in an auto plant, he wouldn't be a UAW member, he'd be a company man trying to squeeze the American worker. True, absolutely true. So I love the energy there, I love to see it. And who knows, I mean, with Sean Fain spreading this real message about the anti-labor characteristics of Donald Trump, maybe some who support Trump will Dig a little deeper to see if it's true. You know, maybe fact check Sean Fain and realize, oh, that's actually right. Uh, Trump was not so friendly toward labor. The other thing I wanted to just quickly mention because I think it's important. Again, bringing up the discontent among the left toward Joe Biden and his support for Israel's war on Gaza. It is true that there are UAW workers who feel the same way. And so during that UAW conference, Joe Biden appeared and he gave his own speech. The speech was interrupted many, many times by UAW workers who are also you know, pro-Palestinian protesters. So I wanted to give you a little taste of that. And I wanna be clear, the people protesting are also UAW workers. In other videos, you'll hear others basically say four more years in support of Joe Biden. So I wanted to give you that proper context, but without further ado, here's what happened. So you hear some people saying UAW to kind of drown out the protesters. And look, the, the fact of the matter is when it comes to workers, especially when it comes to UAW workers, we're talking about a lot of people. There are gonna be differences in political opinion. And if you take a look at the breakdown in who the UAW workers have voted for in the past, the UAW's membership base is not a political monolith, right? About one third of its members voted for Trump in 2016 and 2020, and that's according to the union's internal polling. So the real trick and the, the, I think the most difficult thing to do when it comes to being a union leader is ensuring that all of your workers feel connected to one another and that they prioritize being 
you know, part of labor uh, who look out for one another as opposed to tearing each other down over, you know, some political differences, which of course are going to happen. And I love that. Yeah. So, first of all, I was going to bring up that one third stat too, because uh, when you see Sean Fain, I think two things. One, this brother is not for the Fain of heart. Uh, Nailed it. <laughs> no, I, I love his energy, right? And I love his clarity. He, he just, I don't think it's that hard, but apparently a lot of people in public life struggle with being able to make a clear case. He just listed things one after another after another of what Trump did wrong. We showed it to you earlier, he does it many times. And so the reason why that's so important is because number one, he's making a better case for Biden than Biden ever has. Like I've never seen Biden make a quarter of a, uh, the case that Sean Fain made against Donald Trump. Uh, you know, Biden barely talks, <laughs> barely campaigns. Uh, so when you see someone like Sean Fain making the case for Biden, you're like, wow, that's actually pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. And so he should be all over the campaign trail if he wants to and, and they wanna have him. Uh, and But number two is really important. He's got credibility with American workers because he just delivered great results. He got them higher wages, he got them all these things that he wanted. And yes, he got it specifically for the UAW workers, but all American workers saw with our own eyes that he delivered. And that, and I'm sure that a lot of people thought, I wish I had a guy like that fighting for me at work. Well, right? other car companies in response to UAW workers securing a better contract ended up experiencing an increase in their own wages, even if they're not unionized, even if they're not part of UAW. Yeah, so when a guy like that who has delivered comes and says, Trump's not the guy, and here's why, a lot more people listen. And so a third of those guys that voted for Trump uh, if I told them, hey, Trump's bad, they might not listen as much. They definitely would not listen. <laughs> well, but they would listen to me more than they would listen to an average Democrat because, because at least I'm honest and I criticize Democrats as well. So they can tell when someone's honest. But Sean Fain's got the honesty, the hard hitting stuff that I think that Anna and I have, but he also has the credibility of having delivered for these same guys. Absolutely. And made their lives materially better. And they, and so, and I, I think they all recognize that. So when he says Trump's a bad guy, they're much more likely to listen to them. So this is important in more ways than one. In the old days when the unions did endorsements, it was always rubber stamp, Democrat, Democrat, and no one cared, no one paid attention. And uh, and they never made a good case, they never affected anyone. True. Here we're de dealing with a completely different scenario with Sean O'Brien and Sean Fain uh, that I think could make a big difference in this election.